Greetings, fanboys and girls. I decided that this holiday season, that uh, or approaching uh, Christmas, that uh, instead of doing a riff track of a of a famous never before seen video, that uh, the the guys at Red Letter Media have inspired me to do this. <laughs> the Star Wars Holiday Special. Oh my God! <laughs> this thing came out in November of '78 on TV. It had only aired on TV, and it is probably the single strangest video, holiday video of the holiday video craze at the time ever. Uh, it is baffling. Now, on the back of this box. It's clearly a bootleg because the original's TV recording. It goes on about the galaxy far away and Chewbacca and Kizuk. And it mentions what's going on, but since it's somebody's bootleg, it doesn't matter. Star Wars Holiday Special. And uh, I know Red Letter Media didn't do a part two of their video yet. But since mm. their video was a lot like my Cal Cat show, and Mark Scards and I have rambled on and not gotten gone off topic. I'm actually not going to go off topic, just to be even more meta, and tell you about the Star Wars Holiday Special. Apparently, this thing is... it's just nonsense. Hey, well, uh, the whole, you know, the Star Wars saga, it had just started. So basically, this is a little bit after that. By about a year. Uh, the first movie had come out in 77. And I didn't see the first movie in the theaters, but I had seen it by 78. And uh, I was seven when the movie came out, and the special. Uh, this is not something I recorded. I got this at a convention. And, uh, <laughs> and this was really bad. Uh, it's got Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher in it. And uh, oddly enough, Art Carney and B. Arthur. Uh, yeah. And it has a little video about, um, a, a little video by Jefferson Starship in it, which is really bizarre. And it's got R2-D2 and 3CPO, Anthony Daniels and the like. And, uh, Kenny Baker. I met Kenny Baker. The, not the same convention, but another one. Um, yeah. It's a funny story, because uh, when I met him, he was, uh, uh, he was coming out of the loo, and I was going into the loo. There he was. It was Kenny Baker. <laughs> but yeah, so we <laughs> saw him later at the convention. Anyway, uh, yeah. So let's see. This one also includes, which is kind of cool, Troopers. It says Troops, but it should be Troopers. Hardware Wars and George Lucas in Love and and Lost Auditions. I'm not going to show you any of those, but uh. But I happen to know a guy that was in Troopers 2. He was actually one of the troopers in Troopers 2. So, so I know a lot about the Star Wars universe. Brian was in that. Also, uh, the, the guy from the church was also in uh, E.T. in the background. And he was in... And his brother was a consultant on the second movie. And advised them on, on C-3PO's costume. On improving it. Anyway, we have a... Uh, and, 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 a, and a funny story about this story, which I'll go into at the end, is what happened to Itchy and Lumpy's costume. I know what happened to it. He told me. <laughs> Brian told me. I'll just go into it right now. Why not? Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, ten years later, after the movie was over, in the specials, uh, Brian, Brian and his brother Joe were at the uh, Star Wars lot in uh, L.A., Looking around in the Skywalker stuff because they let him, and he, and they found this trunk full of smelly yaks hair things, and they were like, "Oh my God, it's itchy and lumpy. It's their costumes in Lala. It was their costumes, and they were made from like sewn yaks hair. So this trunk stank to high heaven. It was hilarious." <laughs> I was like, oh my god, oh, what is this? Is something died in here. And it was like, no, that's just Itchy and Lumpy's costume. So, so yeah, if there was a Stinky, that was it. Yeah, Nala's real name was Stinky. True story. All right. <laughs> the Star Wars Holiday Special. 
seems to take place right after the first movie on Life Day. <laughs> it's on the planet Kaiziuk or Kachuk or whatever the fuck they <laughs> are. Achu, what do they call it in the movie? Uh, uh, it takes place on the Wookiee planet up in the trees. And you can tell that Lucas originally intended like the Ewok movie to be about the, the Wookiees. But because his guys did this, it was so b poorly received, so bad that that he banned it later. That uh, that that they said no, 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 don't have it be about the Wookiee planet. That's dumb. Let's make it be about teddy bears. Teddy bear thing is doing that, but it was supposed to be the Wookiees. So that's why it looks similar. Yeah, and in the movies, they prequels, they sort of retconned it. But here is the holiday special. There's a DVD in there, and it is. Dreadful. Yes. Holiday special. Apparently, the writers of this, using pseudonyms, I assume, <laughs> this is after, after Mark Hamill's motorcycle accident. So he's all hopped up on painkillers for the whole thing, and he's going like, Hey, my friend, oh. And he has this weird sort of dazed expression through the whole thing because he's hopped up on painkillers. And and he yeah yeah which is why they had to like explain away his like face looking a little different and bloated in Jedi in a uh, in a uh, Empire because they it's the accident which happened after the movie during Corvette summer which was filming and so uh, here we have um and there was a guy uh, one of, there was a guy stalking Harrison Ford at the time it's funny uh, wasn't me I was way too young to do that no way 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 too young <laughs> I was only seven when this came out. So uh, yeah, this is this is we picked this up at a convention, where there were a lot of people. Uh, yeah, and this is just uh, I'm not gonna tell you who where I got it because you know it's a boot thing. But uh, this is messed up. Okay, so like they're on this, they go to Life Day on this planet. We open up in this weird lit, like a floating like apartment in the trees, and here are the uh, the Wookies, Itchy, Lumpy, and Lana, and. They don't have any subtitles. They just, of course, in this version, I think, in this version, the fans edited, like, like, uh, titles and tried to do that. But, yeah. So, yeah. But, but, yeah, they added that in, and the Wookiees are having Life Day, and they're like, which is sort of like Christmas, which is kind of silly. And they used footage that they didn't use in the first Star Wars movie, in the movie, which is why... Half of it doesn't make sense, and like the Millennium Falcon is basically half of the set that they use. They didn't use the whole set; they just used parts of it. And Harrison Ford, throughout the whole movie, he looks either bored or angry, kind of how he looks like in some of his older movies. But in this one, he's like, "I don't know what we're doing here." Uh -huh. And Luke acts like he's either stoned or flirty, which is strange. And Leia, oh my God. Carrie Fisher. Poor Carrie Fisher. Everybody on the set of this story was stoned and coked out of their minds, either on painkillers or high. So when Carrie Fisher does the Star Wars song with lyrics, it's hilarious, she can't enunciate them because she's, one of her eyes is going one way and one the other. They're all dilated. She's like, yeah, I Star Wars. And she's frying on something. It's like, wow. Carrie. <laughs> God. It's hilarious. Uh, and Star Wars Holiday Special. It's got to keep sticking it up on the screen. So, yeah. Um, And she's high as a kite. And only Jefferson Starship shows up at one point. And Diana Carroll shows up at one point. Well, oh, that's a funny scene. I can get to that one. Um, yeah, the the Wookiee, the mother, the mother Wookiee, uh, Lana, is a housewife, or George Lucas's version of a housewife, <laughs> and she's she's cooking for her family, whatever. And the there's a Grandpa Wookiee, who is Chewbacca's grandfather, I guess, not his father, grandfather, and. And also Chewbacca's son, uh, Lumpy, and uh, Lumpy and Itchy, and uh, Itchy's I think the son, and and uh, 
the grandpa guy, because they couldn't finish the whole costume in time, they gave him sort of like par a partial chin, and <laughs> it keeps falling off. <laughs> he puts on these virtual reality glasses, and he starts watching uh, this this weird program that's on this holographic thing that this peddler sells to him. And uh, Art Carney. And, uh, or is he, or he, he the other guy? It's kind of hard to tell. B. Arthur's in it, too. In the cantina. For some reason, the cantina's there. They're on Tantooine for some reason at some point. It flips back and forth to the cantina. Uh, this, uh, the bad guys are looking for the rebels on the Wookiee planet and the cantina. And, which is on Tatooine, but apparently the director doesn't care. <laughs> but it's a different planet. But, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> oh, it's just bad. Horrible. This movie is... This movie is the room of Star Wars. This this movie is the one that Lucas hid. Lucas should really... The Disney people should really release the official print. Some of the, some of the other Star Wars people I know of... Some people used to work for Lucasfilm. Don't worry anymore, but they did. Some of the Scott. Scott. One of the guys. Uh knows that there is a print of this movie that they could put on Blu-ray and fans would buy it just to see how truly bizarre this movie is. I would buy it on Blu-ray. And lots of other people would buy it just for the sheer bizarre nature of having it on Blu-ray. And with a commentary from the director, that would be awesome. Totally buy that. And then it wouldn't need to be blue-legged anymore because, Lucas, you've got a copy. You've got like two or three. You didn't really destroy it. You probably thought this was the greatest thing ever, George. And, 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 because that, yeah, the, the, this is right up there with the prequels. Yeah, and, <laughs> so, so the old guy, I am Ram Wookie. The old guy, the old Wookie, is watching Dinah Carroll. He's a Wookie, he's a furry sort of Sasquatch dog guy. He's getting off on it. It's the most bizarre thing. He's got these virtual reality glasses, 70s technology, watching a computer screen going, well, his kid is building a device upstairs to, like, like fuck with it, and mess with the voices of everybody and fool the Star Wars, the Stormtroopers later. He's, the father's down, the grandfather's down there watching, in the living room, watching, or somewhere in the house. It's hard to tell. <laughs> He's watching Wookiee porn. So, uh, yeah. Well, it, it is, it's soft core because it was on TV. But this is the girl singing about, like, oh, that she, he loves him, she loves him. Dinah Carroll's phoning it in. And, <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God. Uh, everybody's phoning it in. And then there's this other one where they're watching, the, I guess, the cantina is in there, I guess, on the, on the video, too. Well, that's how it fit in. And uh, the old lady is there. She's running the bar. And there's this alien who drinks his drinks out of his... His head, his mouth is up here, I guess. She's, and she's saying this, My friend, you're my friend. Da -da -da. And the alien gets confused and thinks the song is really about him. And he's like, all dejected. Just kind of demented. And the stormtroopers show up there too, which is odd. And, yeah, and in the cantina, Jefferson Starship shows up, and they start playing music. Like, there's actually a Star Wars song in there. And playing music. This is just... It's out there. It's like this weird discotheque Star Trek... Star Wars, I mean. Star Wars thing. Yeah, discotheque. Uh, and Starship, the leader guy, is uh, singing into a blue glowing dildo. The microphone looks like a dildo. And he's like singing into this purpley blue dildo. Yeah, I bet you didn't know it had words. Yeah, it does. Oh my god, this is so bad. This has to go on Blu-ray, George. This has to. It has to. <laughs> so yeah, this is like, oh how holy. The Boba Fett scene is weird, and you know the only reason that's in there is because of Droids, the cartoon that was going to come out, and also and uh, and because they wanted to showcase this character they were going to introduce later. 
It had nothing to do with what they were going to do later. They, they just ran out of uh, material, so they're like, let's make a cartoon and throw it in here. We don't have enough effects. They just threw everything in there. And people have copied that idea since then and put cartoons in the middle of movies and stuff. But it's like, no, here, I don't think they were trying to be clever. I think they just didn't know what they were doing. And they're just like, oh, I can do that. Because <laughs> why not? Like, my friend, jazz hands, my friend. And, yeah, and um, the son is upstairs in his room, in his loft, making a voice box thing, slash bomb, to stop, the, I guess to stop any intruders. Back there. And the peddler guy is hanging around with him for some reason, Lana and them. And eventually, uh, Mark Hamill shows up at the house. And in Han Solo eventually too. And they defeat the stormtrooper by throwing him off the balcony. The stormtrooper shows up. Ooh, they fool him and then they throw him off the balcony. And then nobody says anything about it. Oh yeah, we pushed him out of the way. Okay, forget about it. He's dead. He probably fell like 300 feet and when he hit the ground probably exploded like a ripe melon. <laughs> All over the place. But no, no, it's okay. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> the logic here escapes you. Well, as a kid's movie, it's kind of like... The Ewok ones were better. The Endor one and the, the Ewok one were better. At least, Wolfer Brimley had a cameo in those. But this one was just... Wow! Oh my god, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. Go, watch it. Go find a copy. Watch it. Um, yeah, so they rescue them. There's your plot, such as it is. Uh, but what's funny is, like, Mark Hamill is actually kind of getting off as well on Lana, the Wicked Lady. He's like helping her in the kitchen and stuff, and he's all like, he's all like, oh, yes, oh, choose ah, wife or whatever, ah, I like you. Or, and he's like, he's acting really flirty with her. It's hilarious. It's like, what's, that's just kind of disturbing. Cause unless he, I guess he's into, he's into Wookiees. Interesting. So is Han Solo, though. I mean, he knows Chewie's junk. <laughs> Red Letter Media, they don't know whether he knows his joke. But yeah, Star Wars, well, it is special. But yeah. And they go on to Life Day, in which they all float up into this ball thing at the end. And when they go on to Life Day, and they're all meeting in the woods, and it's very similar to the scene in the Return of the Jedi with the Ewoks doing that. Dun, 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 dun. That's, he just borrowed it from that. So, um, maybe the Wookiees and the Ewoks are related. I don't know. There's canon. Some, maybe somebody did a fan film where they combined them. Or some of the books did that. Some of these are but, but yeah, uh, New Empire and all that. Um, yeah, Star Wars. Now the new one has that new lightsaber with a hilt on it. Yeah, um, this one doesn't have a hilt on it. This one has a blue, pur a blue, pur purple, purple dildo microphone. It also has... Da, da, da. Jazz hands. Da, 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 da. Could be worse. Could be a minstrel Jar Jar Binks. <gasps> oh, no. So yeah, Star Wars Holiday Special. And Carrie Fisher is singing the Life Day song, which is the Star Wars song with words. Now the Star Trek song had words too. It was called the, uh, the, the uh, you know, it was called the, the Star Woman, which was really bad. It's a good thing those lyrics don't, don't exist anymore. <laughs> remember, remember me. This one is Star Wars, Star Wars, Life Day, Star Wars. It's like, oh my god. And Carrie Fisher is singing this song while dialing it in. While probably not aware she was in the movie. Because I don't know if she dried up since then, but hopefully. In the new movie. Or she'll be coked up. That one. But yeah, she probably did. But yeah, man, she's like. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, shit. Star Wars Holiday Special. There's my review. Yeah, I actually reviewed the movie. I know what Red Letter Media was doing. They're like, they're like, we're not actually going to review the movie. We're going to fuck with you. We're just going to completely screw the audience not talk about the movie. But here's my review of the holiday. And why not? Because it's the holidays. Let's let's review a a classic DVD 
from the 70s. And this is a bootleg off of a video cassette. And oddly enough, it has a PC code. It shouldn't. It has a DVD like listing in the back. So it shouldn't have that either because it isn't official. It's a bootleg. Uh, this is hilarious. Um, yeah. <coughs> quote from George Lucas. It says, if I had time and a hammer, I would track down every bootleg copy and smash it. <laughs> George Lucas. I shouldn't, though. He should release it and get the money from it. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, they could release the Ewok ones. They did that. They could release this one, too. But I know there's footage of it, because on the special editions, the later ones, there's, like, artwork from it, like they pointed out in Red Letter Media. There's actually clips from it. On the later, like, you know, like there's, like, outtakes and things. So, yeah, they, it's out there. There's pr a print of it. I want to see that print. Not just 4 by 3 ratio. I want to see the action. I mean, well, it's made for TV, so it's probably 4 by 3 That's still cool. Um, remaster it with special effects. Life day. Da-da-da, life day. Da 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 life day da 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 Oh my god Lucas Wow Star Wars the holiday special Yeah was C three PO and R2 D2 even in this? I think they had like a cameo in this. There's a little weird picture of them going into their little space warp fifth element type of thing. Before the fifth element. <laughs> wow. I had the video cassette of this one, but this is what... Yeah, I didn't make this one. Yeah, Lucas, put it out. Disney, get get going. Put it out. No, you have a print of it. That's, let's see. And then we don't need a bootleg of it anymore. Mmm, <laughs> this is gonna watch a movie over of an over. Da -da 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 -da. Yep, Star Wars Holiday Special. <laughs> One of the worst movies ever made. This puppy is right up there with... with The Room. <laughs> uh, it's up there with... the... the uh, Turkish Star Trek. They're known as the Turkish Amok Time. Meets the Tourist Omar. Tourist Omar in Star Trek. Turkish Star Trek. Tourist Omar... Who was just a popular Turkish, uh, he was a Turkish character comedy actor that put him in Star Trek. Basically, it was an early Silly Trek, early Kaimara. And then they had, um, um, Turkish Star Wars, which they stole Star Wars footage and Indiana Jones footage, put it in their weird sort of Buck Rogers y sort of adventure in, and called it Irgami Turkami Agam. I think I said that right. The man who saves the earth. <laughs> I gum. Yes. The man who saves the earth. What was their version of Star Wars? Just as weird. They've also done Spider Man and Superman and hilarious. There's like an Indian one too. Oh my gosh. It's hilarious. Yeah, these guys have. These are like the earliest fan films. So this is essentially a fan film done by the Star Wars people though, so just hilarious. Lucas claims he had nothing to do with directing this, but he directed this. Come on, Lucas. You, you, you guys did this. You made a TV special. <laughs> Good luck. Well. Actually, 78. By 2018, official 40th anniversary. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's have a special... Come on out. <clears throat> Wave of War 2018. Release all of the Star Wars Holiday Adventures on DVD, including the Ewoks one, and the one where they, they go back to the Ewok planet, and all that, twice. Yeah, that one. Release all the, all the specials. Awesome. Yeah, I keep rambling. Anyway, Star Wars Holiday Special. Check it out. <laughs>
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>